Alright guys, so uh, this is a bearded dragon, well two bearded dragon enclosures I built a while back. Um, they were cust I custom built them. They're uh, four feet wide by two feet deep and then uh, about eight, I think they're 18 inches tall. And uh, this house is a male and female bearded dragon and this house is a male and two female bearded dragons here in my daughter's room. Um, I'm going to take this concept, I'm going to apply it to a boa enclosure. I'm going to build a boa enclosure just like this. And I'm going to take you all through it step by step to show you how to build one yourself. And uh, show you that you can just apply this to any animal you want to really. I do have a tegu enclosure like this that I built also. And it, uh, it also serves as a TV stand for my two sons in their bedroom. And uh, it's about six feet wide and two feet deep, and it's 18 inches tall. But uh, I'm going to go get started on that bow enclosure now and take you through it step by step. All right, so here's the base of the boa rack that I'm building. It's going to hold five um, four by two by one boa racks in it. Um, or boa cages in it <clears throat> and I've already got my melamine cut out for two of them I'm only going to show you all how to do the first two and then the next the next three are just a repeat of the first two so what I did was I got two by fours cut here these are 48 inches along here and then these that come here are 23 inches and then I've got six casters. I've got a caster here, 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 and here. Six of them. Since it's a four foot wide rack <clears throat> to support it really good. And then these, the legs here, they're 79 inches in length. And that's plenty tall for my reptile room here. Um, so then I've got, I've got, the the base of the rack is going to be 48 inches wide that's this piece of melamine here it's 48 inches wide and 26 inches deep so that's the size of this base down here so i'm going to go ahead and screw that in and i'll come back to it after i've done with that all right so now i've got the base the bottom of the bottom cage put in and i've already install, installed the sides one of the sides now this piece is 25 and a quarter long and then it's exactly 12 inches tall All right so I try to keep the screw heads from showing up inside the cage I don't know that's kind of OCD of me um, you may choose to screw from the inside of the cage but what I did was <laughs> I countersinked two screws on each pole here one here and one down below this clamp and then I had the other clamp over here I've already screwed them in and I had one screw up here at the top and then I've got one screw in the bottom <laughs> and it's a two inch screw so it goes through the two by four and into the melamine but not out the melamine because the melamine is three quarters inch and the two by four is an inch and a half so it's actually two and a quarter inch and the screw is only two inch <laughs> so uh, that'll hold the side in really good um, with my other cages it worked perfect so now I'm going to put the other side in and then I'll show y'all what that looks like I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and slide the back in there I've got it if you notice it's 25 and a quarter that's because I've got a little groove back here and that's where the back of the in the cage is gonna sit and it's all gonna be on top of this so it's gonna cover up those screws that are in there now and uh, I'll come back then. All right, so now I've got the back and both sides put on. Um, I don't know if y'all know how ornery two by fours are, but these were uh, bent a little bit, so I used the tie down to pull the boards in so that I could screw it in flush to the two by fours on the sides, as you see there. Just have three screws on each side here they're one and five eighths inches in length <clears throat> so 
So now I'll just put the top on and it's the exact same size as the bottom. Um, one thing I want to make note of that I want y'all to notice is that the walls of this are completely inside the top and the bottom. In other words, the bottom, the, the sides in the back are sitting on top of the bottom and the top of the cage is going to sit on the top of the sides and the bottom here. So that'll give it some support. And then when I put the sliding track in on the bottom and the, and the top in the front, that'll give it some support in the front. That way it won't bow down over time like melamine usually does. So uh, I'll come back after I've got the top installed and show you what I got. All right, guys. So now I've got the top, the sides, the back, and the bottom all installed on here. Um, all I did was to install the top was I put, you know, two, one screw here, one screw here. And I put three screws along the back and then two more screws over here on this side. That way it's, it's not going to bow and it's plenty of support for these because nothing's going to be sitting on top of these. Um, I'm going to, I'll show you how I'm going to do the next level. I'm going to use, instead of using two by fours, like I did here on the very bottom, I did that for just a structural support on the bottom. But on the next level, as a base for the next cage up, I'm going to use just uh, two by twos. And uh, so I'm going to come back and show y'all what that looks like after I get that done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut my, my rails for the inside here on the bottom and the top up here to put the, where I put the, uh, the sliding track for the sliding glass doors. So, uh, hope you like this. Hope it's helping you. Um, I'll be back shortly. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, I decided instead of putting the top on, I'm going to go ahead and install the heating, the heat tape, the, uh, uh, the, the bottom guides for the track, the sliding track that I'm going to install. And I'm going to install the sliding track on the bottom also. Um, what I'm going to do is these two pieces down here on the very bottom, I'm going to glue them down with just regular Gorilla wood glue like I've got here. And then I'm going to uh, use a brad nailer and nail some brad nails, two inch brad nails into these pieces so that they've got a lot of good support in there. Um, I'm using brad nails on this one. On the other three cages for the bearded dragons and the tegu, I use screws. And uh, I don't know, I just I don't think that's necessary. I think the using the, the glue and the brad nails will be good enough. And uh, I'll come back to this after I have <coughs> installed that. Um, you can pick you up a brad nailer at Lowe's or Home Depot or even Harbor Freight. Um, Harbor Freight usually has really good sales on them and stuff. Um, if you've got an air compressor. But uh, anyway, I'm going to install this the sliding track and stuff. And then I'll come back before I install the heat tape on there. Show you what I got. Alright, so I've got the bottom uh, guides in there the support for the track on the bottom um something i didn't mention to y'all was the width of the boards i've got the ones for the for the second cage that go on the bottom um what this is is this piece of wood this piece of melamine right here what i had when i had had them cut the wood at home depot i uh, had them cut uh 15 sixteenths um roughly an inch off the very top of the board because these melamine boards come in 49 inch widths and I wanted 48 so I was able to salvage this one inch strip and then cut it in half so I'd have one for the bottom one for the top and then for the one that goes behind it it's gonna be a quarter inch taller than the front board so if you look let me see if I can get this real quick if you look here you see there's about a quarter of an inch difference in depth and this is this front one here is where the track is going to sit that way it's going to be flush with the back piece and then we'll be able to pop our glass in there pretty easily <clears throat> um but yeah these are 46 and a half inches wide 
um, for the bottom and the top. Now the top one, the top track is a quarter of an inch taller than the bottom track. Um, I'll show you all the difference of that when I get to it um, in just a second. But uh, the front piece is going to be the exact same depth. It's going to be like 15 sixteenths of an inch or, or an inch. And then the back piece is going to be one and a half inches tall rather than one and a quarter inches tall. <clears throat> so uh, let me install that. Or I'm going to show you all the track here in just a second. Let me get it out. Okay, so now I've got the, uh, the track installed on the lower portion of where the sliding glass doors are going to go. I just fastened it in with some brad nails all across the back. And then I've, go, I've already installed my heat tape on the left side of the cage. And y'all can see back here the, uh, where the recess is. So the cable, the cord comes out the back and the bottom um, of the cage back there. All right, so so now you're probably wondering, well, what about something over the heat tape itself? Well, what I'm doing for that is I've got this stuff that I found it. I found it at Home Depot and Lowe's. It's called a uh, flame retardant, fire retardant panels. It's it's basically vinyl. Um, just a really heavy duty vinyl. You can see it's uh it's got um I've got my son in here with me. He's giggling at me for something. Um but you can see it's got a uh texture to it, which I, I kinda like. I think I think the snakes will like that, my boas will like that. And it's really thin, it's not that thick. And um I highly recommend getting this cut to your exact dimensions at Home Depot. Um or Lowe's. Um, I prefer Home Depot just because they don't charge to cut. Lowe's they charge like 50 cents a cut and when you're getting like a hundred cuts that adds up. <laughs> but um yeah I'm gonna lay this on top and then I'm gonna caulk it around the bot around the base so that it gives it a good waterproof seal to it and uh, I'm gonna get that installed on there next and I'll come back and show y'all what that looks like. Alright so I'm back. Um, so I've caulked down the uh, the fire or the fire retardant panel, flame retardant panel, the vinyl basically, and uh, I'm trying to keep from having to screw any of the corners down on this. So as you can see here, I've caulked it, and then I've ran over it with my finger so that it's smooth and stuff. Um, this stuff is non-toxic to the snakes, especially once it dries. It's it's non-toxic. Um, even wet, it's non-toxic to them. But anyway, um, I laid bricks down on top of it, and I'm going to leave those bricks on there for 24 hours till the caulk cures so that the the base of it will stay down, you know, flat, flush with the bottom. There's going to be a little bit of a bump over here at the back of it where the heat tape connections are. Um, so it'll be... So it'll... It'll have a little raise in the flooring there, but that's not going to affect the snake at all. She's not going to care for that. It's a big old boa constrictor. Even if she has to go uphill for just a millimeter, you know, give her a little bit of exercise, right? So uh, I'm going to leave these bricks on there for 24 hours. I'm going to go ahead and work on the top and the top sliding rail and stuff and put those track the track in on the top. And I'll come back after I get that top installed for you. All right, so this cage is pretty much done. Um, we let the dry the top track. I glued the top track in on this piece instead of using brad nails because it's just hard to get my brad nailer into the slot in there. Um, I uh, let it dry overnight, and we just installed the glass. And I had the glass custom cut. Um, and, uh, the glass is actually nine and nine sixteenths inch by 25 inches long. So the depth of it here is nine and nine sixteenths inch, of course. And then from left to right, it's 25 inches and there's an over, an overlap, a gap 
where it overlaps about two and a half to three inches in width. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It looks really good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start on the second cage. And I'm just going to show you all what it looks like after it's all done. And then we'll... That'll be the last one that I build for right now. I don't really need any more. But I'll have it all set up so it'll be easy for me to add to it. And I can add up to five cages to this. <clears throat> um, but uh, Anyway, hope this has helped y'all out. Giving y'all some good ideas. Maybe y'all can even improve on it. Um, but I'll show you what it looks like after I've got the second level in. The second level I'm going to be using this... Uh, this uh, it's going to be two by twos as the base of it. And then I'm going to have a three quarter inch gap between the top of this cage and the, the bottom of this, uh, two by two frame I've already built for it. Um, so yeah, so I'll be back. I'll show you what it looks like after it's done. All right, so here's the finished product. Like I said, I'm going to build, I'm going to add three more cages onto this, um, just like these two. So there'll be a total of five. <coughs> but um, I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Um, see, I've already got my biggest female in there. She's chowing on a rat right now. It's actually the size of a squirrel. That rat was huge. But, um, yeah, you see, she's a little bit longer than the length of the cage, but she seems to like it really good. Um, I did add bumpers to the side. I just used some weather stripping to stop the glass from banging into the melamine. And then here's the track. Here, I'll show you on this one. I got that one locked. There's the track on there. And I don't know if you can see, can you see the textured floor? There you go. And the heat tape's underneath that. And then I got these little pulls, these handles from the same place I got the sliding glass track from. And uh, so yeah, it turned out really, really good. Oh, and I got these little locks so that just in case they try to keep them, try to slide them open. They won't be able to. I got these at Home Depot. They were like four or five dollars a piece. <clears throat> but uh, so yeah, I hope this helps y'all and y'all can do something, build something just like this. It's really not that hard as long as you've got the tools to build it. You know, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video out. And I'll try to put all the measurements and everything for one cage and then the base with the caster wheels attached. I'll try to put that all in the description. And uh, feel free to message me on here <coughs> or email me with any questions you may have. Talk to you later.